homemakers and welcome to another studio vlog. I'm Joanna and this is Stitching the High Notes, a YouTube channel all about knitting, sewing, and stitching and a look behind the scenes of my creative online business. My hope is to share my makes with you and to encourage you to stitch a little creativity and joy or the high notes into your everyday life. How has your week been? I hope it's been a good one. I've had a creatively productive week <laughs> more more so than in previous weeks it's been a really great one i have a little bit of knitting or a little bit of knitting but some big progress to share on my tender sweater by melody hoffman um, but for the most part i wanted to do a little q a vlog i thought it would be really fun to do i haven't done one in some time and there are several new subscribers and members of our community welcome and um thought it would be really nice to do a little intro slash kind of q a um chat so i put a call out over on instagram yesterday uh, and got several questions so thank you all for sending those in uh but first let's let me update you on my my knitting here so i've got it it's like getting bigger inside of this bag this is one of my uh, sweater bags that i have in my online shop um this is from a recent collection sweeter sweeter than honey uh, there are a handful of these back in various designs as well as books and tea bags that are now ready to ship uh, all of the pre-orders which i had been working on this past week have now been shipped out and are on their way to you all so thank you all again uh, but I nabbed one for myself because I couldn't help it uh, and inside I have my tender sweater so without further ado let me show ya it's grown it's grown a lot yet not a lot <laughs> it's so interesting when you when you get to a different phase of a project but here it is so I have separated now as of this morning for my front and back of my sweater. Uh, this is bottom up, so the hem is right here. Uh, I'm using DK Weight Yarn by the Royal Bee Yarn Company, which is local to here in Pacifica, California. I'm in the San Francisco Bay Area. And um, it is a super fine merino. Oh, I have the ball band right here. So let me show you. There it is right there. Uh, DK weight, super fine merino, uh, and the colorway is Leanne says, try the gray stuff, it's delicious. So here's a beautiful close up of it. So you can see it in all of its glory and this beautiful chevron texture. And apologies if you hear off and on, somebody's doing a little bit of construction outside. So, and a little bit inside too. <laughs> happening all around me so what am I gonna talk through it um so yes where to begin with the little but mighty progress that I have made this week so first off before I separated last night I picked this up again for the first time since last week essentially uh, because I've been sewing and working and meetings and all that stuff all week uh, and I finally looked up and watched the beautiful and easy to understand, well articulated <laughs> uh, tutorial by my friend, my friend Grace, uh, of how to do the jogless join or heel curl knitting when you are alternating skeins or you are doing stripes with two different colors. It is simple. It is beautiful. I did it for maybe about three rounds and I probably won't do it again until I am back knitting in the round on the sleeves. But I am so glad to know it. It's going to be my go-to way. I will direct you. I'll leave a link down below, which by the way, everything that I mentioned today, including all of the details about this are down below as well as where you can find me in the description box below. Um, but I will, I'll, I'll direct you to watching her tutorial, um, but it is just a matter of slipping three stitches and then picking up the next working yarn for the next skein. It is so easy and so simple. So to show you, so you can maybe see a little bit of the difference of what it looks like, I'm gonna show you the inside 
of the beginning of my round. So you can see it here. So I still need to, um, this uh, we weave and re weave say that three times fast the ends right here i need to do this a little bit more cleanly but here you can see this is where i was doing carrying up the seam once i had gotten to the stockinette i was carrying up uh the yarn as well i had just done one skein here because i got lazy but <laughs> i was doing that when i was doing the chevron pattern but it's kind of you can't see it too much in here but I was just carrying up the yarn every two rows. And then here, it's of course doesn't look as clean because I've separated now for the front and the back. But from here up, for, so maybe about three or four rows, I did the helical knitting, or this way actually. And you can't see any seam, it's so crazy. I mean, do you see it? I don't see it. It's pretty amazing. And I'll show you on the front so you can really see the magic there. They are just hammering away out there. So here you can see kind of where I was doing the seam. You'll see it a little bit. It'll block out. But then from here, oh, it's so awkward to show. From like here to here, you don't see any seam and the stitches lie a little bit flatter. So it's really, really beautiful. By the way, my progress keeper is where I was last week uh, at the very end of the vlog to now. So this is what I've knit this past week. I had to take a little sip of water. I was sitting at an angle that made me choke up and cough. <laughs> So now I, this morning, I separated for the front and back. Uh, I knit to a certain amount of stitches per the pattern and then put the front stitches on an extra little wire that I had that are carbons uh, for my carbons set, just because they have these little stoppers on there. Uh, the needles I'm using are signature needles. I really love them, they're really awesome. Um, they do, I think I mentioned in a couple of vlogs ago, the only downside is that they kind of catch a little bit on the join down here, um, but they're really lovely to work with. And I have tried it on. I'll put a little video here so you can see what it looks like. Uh, it has about eight-ish uh, inches of positive ease per the pattern, so it's looking really good, really spot on to having it be a nice, roomy, beautiful sweater that I can wear over a t-shirt uh, and walk outside in. Uh, it feels so yummy and wonderful. This yarn is so, so beautiful to work with. And uh, yeah, I'm really eager. I'm just gonna be doing stockinette uh, uh, knitting on the right side and purling on the wrong side for several inches uh, for the back piece. Um, and then I'll have to read the pattern and see where, where I go from there. <laughs> I'm gonna order some 12 inch circular needles, uh, size six, I believe. I might need to order some size five as well uh, to do the sleeves, because I really wanna try using those for the sleeves. In the past, I've done Magic Loop uh, for sleeves, but uh, a lot of people recommend and have used uh, 12 inch circulars so that you're just knitting, 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 knitting for days. So that is a little bit yet a lot of progress that I've made on my sweater. So without further ado, let's get into some questions and answers. And uh, interspersed between these questions, I'm gonna have a little bit of footage from a lovely walk that I took earlier today. Right, keeping with the knitting theme first, I thought it would be wonderful to answer this question, which was, uh, and I've got them all up on my phone here, I took some screenshots before they went away in my stories, uh, but it is most used slash worn hand knit item. And 
I would say it's a toss up between two. I went and grabbed them out of my drawer. The first is this hat, uh, which is the Chevy hat by Andrea Mowry. I made this, oh goodness, I want to say three years ago, maybe three years ago. Um, I made it during Vlogmas one year, so many of you might remember when I made it. Um, and I would, I, I think it's one of my, I think it's my go-to hat. It fits really well. I have my hair up right now, but I'll put it on. It's made with Barrett wool yarn. Uh, I'll have my project page linked down below with all the specs, <laughs> all the stats. So you can see it's like a nice, like little slouchy hat. So I could wear my hair up, um, with it on, but it's lightweight. It's just perfect for California um, weather. It's breezy, so you can you can feel the air going through your to your head. <laughs> um, but it's nice and cozy and warm um, because it's 100% wool, uh, and it's a beautiful. I just love the the pattern, the kind of seed stitch ish pattern right here. Um, yeah, it's just a really classic pattern. And plus it reminds me of uh, Charlie Brown because of the chevron. And uh, I think I was knitting this a lot during our Charlie Brown Christmas uh, special that we used to do at the symphony. And then the next most worn item is also purple. So maybe purple's my jam, but it is this cowl, which is the Flaunt It Cowl. Um, and it is in Bulky Yarn by Hugh Loco. Uh, colorway and everything I'll probably have on the screen slash link down below. And it's a really, really easy, easy pattern. It's just like a rib, like so many rows, so many stitches of knit and then you purl. Um, but you increase or decrease, I can't remember which way you do, so that it sits really lovely. I'm trying to remember which way it goes. Oh, I love it. I love the yarn. It's super, super soft. Um, I love the way that it sits. I love that I can like move it higher. I can even do this like a snood. I feel so non-Californian like this. <laughs> I put my neighbors across, across the way can see me right now, so it's very awkward. <laughs> But I wear this quite a bit in combination with my Chevy hat. So those are my two most worn items. Um, I would say sweater wise, uh, it's my linen pullover. Um, but I honestly haven't been wearing them as much because I haven't been out and about as much. Which is why I am making sweaters this year specifically for kind of walking outside and stuff uh, more so than the lighter sweaters that I've made that are more so for sitting in an office and can be fully layered up um, <clears throat> for when I am going to the city and I'm working inside most of the day. But yeah. Next question is, I would love to know how long you've been knitting and who taught you? I have been knitting, technically been knitting since, gosh, I want to say 2000, like when did I go to grad school? <laughs> I want to say 2005, I think, is when I first knit. Um, and that was I taught myself, I think maybe YouTube was around then or maybe somebody showed me or I just looked it up online, like Googled how to do a knit stitch. Uh, and I just was knitting like a scarf essentially during rehearsals because I was so bored out of my mind and I needed something to do with my hands. Uh, and that was during the rehearsals. Oh, by the way, I am a former opera singer. So this was during rehearsals for Hansel and Gretel, I played the mother and I was only in a handful of scenes. So I think it was during like tech week, tech week or something when you're hopscotching around in different scenes to get the lighting cues all set up. And I just 
had to be on and ready. And at the time I was like really cross stitching. That's when cross stitching had really fully reentered in my life. But cross stitching is not something you can put down <laughs> super easily uh, in terms of when you're kind of on call to be in a rehearsal. So I needed something else creative to do. Um, and I'd heard uh, that a lot of, a lot of singers uh, knit, a lot of singers and actors knit. So I picked it up then. And then I stopped <laughs> pretty soon after that production because grad school and life takes over. Um, and I was more into cross stitching anyway. And I didn't pick it up again until, gosh, I think it's going on six years ago now. Um, a little bit over five years ago. Um, and I picked it up for a very similar reason. I was doing a production where I had a lot of downtime and I was sick at looking at my screen, at my phone, um, and wanted something creative to do and something that I could do quasi in the dark because we were kind of in the dark a lot of the time. The house, the house lights were down most of the time. So uh, by that time, YouTube was in full force. So I learned from YouTube. I learned from a, actually a Creative Bug series also uh, by with Debbie Bliss, I think. It was. Debbie Stoller. I always get the names wrong. And they couldn't be different, <laughs> more different. Uh, Debbie Stoller, who uh, co-founded the Stitch and Bitch um, back in the day and uh like knitting groups and stuff kind of helped to reinvigorate the knitting circles for a new generation in the early 2000s late 90s i believe um she was a great teacher more up my speed and i really latched on to how she uh, described stitching i loved what i really loved about it is that i loved her approach to and really all of knitting is this way where it is um, an emphasis on not per not being perfect, uh, that you can rip it out. If you messed up a stitch, just tink back. Um, if you dropped a stitch, grab a crochet hook and here's how to fix it. And as, and I'll be talking about this a little bit later, but in, in, um, answer to another question, but I think at the time it was just like, the world's aligned because I was so deep into this world of um, classical music and mastery and perfection and um, being that doing something creative where if I messed up it was okay and expected and was part of the process was like what so that is I started knitting then and I learned from YouTube and very pink knits is a huge I've learned almost everything from very pink knits here on YouTube I'll refer to her tutorials quite often and um yeah that's and the rest is history as they say <laughs> I haven't stopped knitting since Since I mentioned cross stitching, there are two questions related to that. One is, are you doing any cross stitching these days? And the other is, I'm going to it. What is your favorite thing about cross stitching? So my favorite thing about cross stitching is the order and structure of it. As a Virgo and somebody who loves organization, I am a project manager for a career and so I love I love organization and doing something creative and beautiful as a result of something that is using both it uses both sides of your brain. You know, your free willy nilly creative side and then your side that is all about logic and uh I don't know, physics, whatever. <laughs> so I love that. I love, um, that's the main thing I love about cross stitching. Now, if I'm cross, am I cross stitching these days? The answer is not so much these days. Um, I talked about this a little bit at the beginning of the year in my intentions video is that I'm kind of taking a step back from cross stitching for a little bit. I'm going to pause here because they're hammering. Okay. Um, taking a bit of a break uh, from cross-stitching because 
it's really hard for me to find cross stitch patterns that fit my style and my aesthetic um, and yeah I, I just am not called to do it and the main one that I love is Satsuma Street I know they just came out several of you sent it to me they came out with another beautiful pattern of uh, Easter eggs that I would love to make um, but I really want to spend time doing other creative things and you only have so much creative time in the day, right? And I'll get back to it. Cross stitching was my first love and I'll come back to it. I actually have a project here I wanted to show you that I'm going to do at some point. I got another foam case that has uh, holes put into it. So I'm going to do a little um, cross stitch pattern that I'll make up on my own at some point along the line. By the way, totally not sponsored, but I love these cases. These are by uh, Pela or Pila. They are 100% com uh, compostable, 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 um, and they are designed in in Canada. Um, and they are made with plants. They're awesome. I have several that I swap out and clean after being out and about in public places. This is one, are you gonna focus? This is one that I have on here right now that is embracing my woo woo moon, my moon lady vibes that I, <laughs> that I have. I have another one that's like a honeybee one. So cross stitching. Um, I'm not currently cross stitching. I have no big plans to, but I will be focusing more on embroidery this year because that is more of my, my style the the design the the painting with thread is something that i really want to learn and get into and i would really like to figure out ways to meld both of those worlds cross stitch and embroidery uh in a new way i think it would be fun to explore so yeah that's cross stitching Another question is, when did you move to the Bay Area? So I grew up here. I grew up in the Bay Area. I lived here up until I went to college uh, and then was coming back and forth. My family lived here uh, up until about 10 years ago. Then they moved to Sacramento. Um, and I moved back to the Bay Area full time and have been here uh, since 2010. Um, I was living in New York at the time and moved back to be closer to family and to explore opportunities out here. These two questions are doozies. <laughs> and I get it off and on um, probably every couple of months uh, from several people. So uh, there's, do you think you will go back to performing? And then uh, there is, are you still singing? With several question marks. <laughs> So these are doozies for several reasons. Um, so short answers first. Short answer is, am I still singing professionally? No, because COVID. <laughs> um, and am I still, am I singing besides professionally? Off and on, like around the house, you know, when I go up, I'll sing for family or to like a few high notes for my nephew. But for the most part, I haven't been because honestly, I needed a break. Um, it was just ironic that it was a forced break <laughs> because of the global pandemic. But I was headed toward, if not already, burnt out by the professional side of singing. Um, so will I go return to performing? Um, performing, I hope so, just on a gig by gig basis. I really hope to go back and sing at Davies Hall at least one more time and get some closure. Um, cause that for, so backstory, pedal back here. For just about 10 years, I was singing as a professional member of the San Francisco Symphony Chorus. So Symphony Orchestra Chorus. Um, alongside that, my, my main career is as a 
fundraising professional administrator in the arts performing world. So I used to work at a local theater here. And then several years ago, I had the opportunity to meld my singing world, Joanna, with my admin world, Joanna. And I've been working at the San Francisco Opera for several years now. Um, but in terms of my professional singer hat that was across the street from the opera over at the symphony. Um, and I had been doing that for some time since I moved back essentially to the Bay Area. I had many opportunities to do solo, big solo opportunities there. Um, and it was a wonderful, wonderful joy. However, as you grow older, and in different chapters and seasons of your life, your values, your priorities change, your rhythm changes. And that very much so was happening in the last, I would say two to three years for myself. I have um, been wanting a very simple, I want, I am living, especially because there was a pandemic, but I'm living a very simple, slow, huga lifestyle and that's that is what resonates with me that's the rhythm of life that I want and that um, works best for me and working a full-time day job and then also a part-time singing career just was running me into the ground and so it wasn't sustainable for some it hasn't been sustainable for some time alongside that I um, also went and studied and was pursuing to be a full-time singer for many years. And singing in a chorus is very different than singing as a full-on opera singer doing arias and, and solo work. So that was honestly, that was starting to wear on me creatively as well. I felt like I wasn't, um, I wasn't using my voice and allowing myself the space to use my voice in the way that I really truly wanted to. Um, and so, yeah, so that is, I probably, I, I'm not going to be returning um, in any part-time or full-time capacity to professional singing. That chapter has ended, it just ended sooner than I was ready for or <laughs> expected it to be because of COVID. Um, but once a singer, always a singer. And I'm looking forward to when it is safe again, to um, returning out there and, and finding and discovering what singing means to me now in this season of my life. And uh, I'm really excited and thrilled about that. And also approaching it with... Um, going back to being a knitter, approaching it with that um, non-perfectionist lens. Because I think in the classical world, which is what I can speak to, you, the culture there is perfectionism and uh, full-on mastery of something. And there's a emphasis of ego a little bit, um, like that diva kind of thing that doesn't jive with me, never really did. And it definitely doesn't anymore. It's not a part of my value system and it's not an environment that I want to be in all of the time. I know that sounds a little cryptic, but I'm trying not to like ruffle any feathers. <laughs> um, but that's where I'm at. So, uh, some people, a lot of why it's a little bit emo emotionally ch charged as well is that my identity was so entwined in being a singer. Uh, it still is to some extent. It is part of who I am. But I think when you're an athlete or when you are a singer or a musician and you're working toward being the best that you can be in that field, or in any field, any career field, um, it becomes very entwined with your self-identity. And uh, because of the pandemic and realizing all of a sudden that that part of me was 
gone whether I was ready to or not made me go, oh, that's not healthy. That's not good. <laughs> and so I'm hesitant to go back because I don't want, I, I want to find, I want to find who I am without singing. <laughs> um, and I'm really excited and I've already started that journey and I'm feeling very centered and grounded more so than I have in a very long time. So that's my very long-winded windy way of answering those couple of questions. <laughs> A couple of other related questions. Uh, first up, new here, welcome. Uh, why did you decide to start making project bags and podcasting? And then the other is, what inspired you to start your project bag business? So I started knitting five or six years ago and um, I, right around that time is when knitting podcasts became really big over on YouTube. I loved knitting podcasts. I loved the community that was growing and building. Um, and I wanted to be a part of it. I wanted to share my journey. I wanted to record it for myself um, and just have it on there. I feel so weird saying it, but I've always been a little bit of a vlogger. <laughs> Uh, even with like those big old VHS camcorders or like the, you know, whatever configuration that we've had over the years. Um, I've always kind of, I've loved making movies. I love um, recording life because I have seen footage from my grandparents back in the day and like the homecoming parades in the 40s and their small town in Kansas and things like that and making reunion movies and stuff. And so I see the value and um, beauty of recording daily life. And so I've always been attracted to doing that. So that was an element. Another element was I just really wanted to be part of this knitting community. And then it, uh, in terms of project bag making, so I love to sew. I don't do it near, uh, in terms of making garments and stuff, I don't do it nearly as often as I would like to. That is one of my goals for this coming year. I think it is every year. Um, and I was making a lot of costumes and learning to sew and different techniques and stuff from my mom. And I had made a couple of project bags of my own uh, using several different tutorials and I really liked the process. Um, and then honestly, I started the project bag uh, business because I was curious, I wanted to use all of my business skills that I have from being an administrator and a project manager and see if I could do like a little, you know, a hobbyist business and make a, a, the initial intent was to uh, make some money to pay down student loan debt, which is, <laughs> what is paying down student loan debt? Um, but it turned like, it quickly turned into a passion. I discovered how much I loved coming up with designs for the bags, for discovering and honing the production line process of making bags for the marketing. I love marketing and branding. Um, and I just love all the facets of running your own creative business. Um, and then I just love sewing and making beautiful things and picking fabrics. I love pairing different fabrics together and it's just grown and grown and grown and it's been a godsend. It's been a godsend because quickly as at the same time as I was kind of going, I'm ready to start phasing out <clears throat> this, um, that particular position of, uh, at the symphony as a singer to move towards a simpler lifestyle and a slower pace of life. Hopefully no more 14 hour long days. Um, and coming home at 1 a.m. Uh, from concerts, but unless I'm going to watch a concert. Um, so the, the business was going to be the replacement for that income. Um, and then this past year, it's been a necessity to grow the business, uh, but it's also been 
it's it's grown in ways that I haven't expected and that will continue to grow and I can't wait to see where it's going to go. I have a lot of ideas, a lot of dreams of where I'd like to be in five years um, and I'll leave it at that. So that's what inspired me to start making bags and to start a business. The second to last question today is, do you have a goal to achieve in the next year? It can be knitting, life, big, small, etc. What is it? Uh, I, I shared uh, several of my intentions and goals at the beginning of the year, but I would say the primary one this year is more on the personal side, and that is that I want a man. <laughs> I'm ready to have a relationship um, and to find a partner in life. And so um, it's very interesting to have that goal and be more ready for that goal than in years past uh, during the tail end, hopefully the tail end of a global pandemic. <laughs> but it is possible. I'm starting to get out there, socially distant. I'm hoping very soon to get my vaccine. Um, and so that is my big goal this year is not to find my, you know, who knows when I'm going to find my life partner, but, um, I feel like that's my main focus is to, is to, to find, um, someone to love and someone to love me. Um, and I think when I set that intention, it's allowed me to, put things in place and move and grow toward things that I haven't focused on in the past. So it's been, it's only March, but it's been a beautiful process so far. And the last question for this vlog is in reference to last vlog, I mentioned at the very tail end that I my dream is to own my own tiny home. I am on the tiny home train. <laughs> choo choo. <laughs> I would love to have a, a little tiny home somewhere. So they asked, where would you settle in your tiny home? And how do you want it to look like? What do you want it to look like? I, that is another vlog in itself. <laughs> uh, so where do I want it to be in the North Bay here in the Bay Area? Um, I just love it. Maybe near the Russian River Valley, Humboldt, Sebastopol area. Um, the reason there is because I want to be closer to, um, I want to be closer to the ocean a little bit. I still want to stay in the Northish Bay because I live in the East North Bay right now. Um, but I want to still be close to family in Sacramento so I can get to them if need be and visit them, have it be easy to visit them. Um, and I just love it up there. My, my, I feel it just like relief and a sigh and like my soul feels, feels filled when I go there. And it has been that way ever since I was a little girl. So, um, it would be there or, um, Second choice is near the Half Moon Bay area as well. Um, but North Bay, because of location and also location, location, location. <laughs> now what I would like it to look like is ongoing process of just constantly watching all of the YouTube channels. So I'll put a link uh, down below to one of my favorite ones. Um, uh, if you have a favorite tiny home channel or blog, please put it down in the comments down below. I am like soaking up all of the information. Uh, right now, what I would like it to look like is um, just one big, I don't know if I want a storage container, I don't know. I would like a, a, a somewhat large, just, you know, kind of rectangular shaped main part of the home, a super big porch out front, um, I think I would put it on a flatbed, um, but then like put like lattice, like fencing around it to hide it until I would need to move it or, you know, hire somebody to move it at some point. Um, and then I want to have an extra uh, bit. So it'd be like a little L shaped building complex um, and a little kind of side building. That would be my um, artist studio, my sewing studio and my business kind of hub um, 
for home because I hope someday I'll maybe have like a brick and mortar shop. I'm just going to say it. So, <laughs> um, so a little something extra if you made it to the end of this Q and a vlog. So, um, <laughs> I feel so cheeky saying that, but, uh, so I, uh, would have like a little other little building. Maybe you can connect to it. Um, I've seen a couple of houses that do that, that you can connect your like main living space, uh, into this separate little building. Um, I want an outdoor bathtub because why not? I would love it to be off grid. Let me change my battery. BRB. We're back. So I'd love to for it to be off grid. I want solar panels on the roof. Uh, I want it, I might, I'd, I'd like it maybe to be hooked up to a water system. That would be the preference. Um, but a composting toilet, I'm all for it. Um, and I would like for my own garden and I'd like to be as self-sustaining as possible. Um, I'd like it to be not like in the middle of nowhere, but close enough to maybe like a small little town somewhere, um, maybe like 30 minutes away from an even larger town. And then of course, like you have to always take into consideration like flooding and fires and all that stuff. So I'd have to like figure out that that kind of location like what would be best especially these days because the area that i would like to move to is always flooded or having fires these days but what place isn't having something right now so um and what else i think inside i don't want to do like the ladder loft thing i'm 40 years old i don't that's not no <laughs> gonna happen um not to say that if you're over 40 year old 40 zero, 40 years old that you couldn't do that or want to do that or should do that but for me personally knowing myself I don't want to do that I've seen some designs where you have like a nice like little staircase with storage all over the place storage for days hidden storage um and there's like a really nice lovely like hallway kind of so if you're like on the upper level like you have like this hallway that you can still stand so you're not like hitting your head on the ceiling and then there's like a little extra room like up at the top like if there's a kiddo someday or something um or and then like my main room would be over to this side so that you have like two different separate spaces um the downstairs like i want as big of a kitchen as you can get because i love cooking and um entertaining on the patio um i'd do like a projection system for like my tv so i wouldn't have like all of that um i've seen a lot of people with like living roofs or like living walls in their uh tiny um homes so i would love to do something like that um, really the sky's the limit and I'm finding more and more like Instagram accounts and stuff that I'm following with I mean there's just the movement is happening because it is in a lot of ways the the main way that people can afford to own their own home these days um, I know for myself that is probably the most feasible option if I want to own my own home so um, and, and live in the area that I live in so and but more so than that though i don't want to live in too big of a space i feel my best and like life is flowing at its best when i live in a small space that's i chose to live in this studio space i love living in small spaces so uh which i think is the name of my favorite <laughs> my favorite youtube channel so yeah that's my dreams for my tiny home and that's going to do it for this week's studio vlog and a nice Q&A session. I hope you uh, enjoyed a nice little visit there and got some progress done on your stitching or knitting, whatever you're doing today. Um, I hope you have a wonderful week. Uh, next week, I will have a vlog. It might be 
up a little bit later. We'll see. Hopefully not. It will be at our usual time. I am going to be going up for a good chunk of the week to work up there and spend the weekend with my family um, because uh, they have been vaccinated, which is wonderful. But my sister is returning to teaching uh, part time in person and my nephew is going back to daycare. So that means until I get vaccinated, I'm probably not going to be able to see them safely. So this is the last big hurrah till hopefully knock on wood, I can get my vaccine um, pretty soon. So cross your fingers and toes. I hope you all are getting vaccinated if you are able to. Um, and yeah, but I, I'm looking forward to spending some time up there. I'm going to be putting some more furniture together for my mom and get uh, put some new things in her kitchen. Um, to help her move around a little bit easier in there. Um, it's hard to believe. I think today, actually, today is like a weird anniversary of dates, but today actually too is, I think, the anniversary of when they moved in last year to their new home. So what a year of first year of home ownership. Um, so I'm looking forward to hanging out with my nephew as well. And um, I'll probably be cooking a little bit as too, so there'll be a little bit of vlogging from Mamas uh, next week. So have a wonderful week, and I will see you all next Sunday. Bye.